Hello and welcome to Cultivated World, the channel that brings you the good stuff. Today we'll be looking at the Rolex Sea Dweller. We'll be talking a little bit about the history and why this watch is an absolute submariner killer. Back in 1960, Rolex created a development watch called the Deep Sea Special. This experimental watch was used during the marine exploration of the deepest parts of the world's oceans, known as the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. The Deep Sea Special was attached to the outside of the submarine and the divers reached a depth of almost 11 kilometers below the surface. When they successfully resurfaced, the Deep Sea Special was in working order and enforced Rolex's reputation and expertise as the pioneers of diving watches. This led the way for the first production Sea Dweller which was launched in 1967. It had an almost identical design to the Submariner which was launched 14 years prior but was a much more capable watch with double the water resistance. The Sea Dweller was nicknamed the Double Red which refers to the two red lines of text on the dial and has become very desirable amongst collectors. The double red went out of production in 1977 and took with it the beloved red text, which was not to return until many decades later. This is the model reference 126600 and was launched at Basel World in 2017, marking the 50th anniversary of the original double red sea dweller from 1967. The release of the Sea Dweller 43 was an expected surprise, which is quite the oxymoron. Allow me to explain. This model was a replacement for the Sea Dweller 4000, which was only in production for three years, which is important to note, as this is an extremely short life cycle for a modern Rolex. On the other hand, it was the 50th anniversary of the Sea Dweller, and we all know Rolex like to celebrate a 50th anniversary with a special release. With that in mind, the 50th anniversary of the Explorer 2 is next year, in 2021. It will be interesting to see what Rolex conjures up for that. One of the first things that strikes you about the Sea Dweller is its size. With an increase of 3mm, the case diameter is now 43mm and 50 millimeters thick, making this quite a substantial watch. I have a wrist size of 17 centimeters or six and three quarter inches, and I find that the Sea Dweller 43 is at the end of what I feel acceptable on my wrist. It is comfortable to wear, but I would always be conscious of it. And it's not something I could wear every day. This change in size helps to alleviate one of the biggest criticisms of the outgoing Sea Dweller 4000, which was 40mm wide and 15.5mm thick. It was often described as having the profile of a hockey puck. With this new size adjustment, the Sea Dweller's proportions are much improved and has managed to further impose its position above the Submariner in the Rolex lineup. The detail that made most positive headlines and seemed to stir up countless arousal amongst us Rolex fans was the reintroduction of the beloved red text above the 6 o'clock position. This is a clear reference to the early Sea Dwellers, such as the Double Red and the Single Red, which were actually Sea Dweller prototypes and are extremely rare. The flash of red also further suggests its superiority over the more common Submariner. The white gold markers on the gloss black dial are larger than before and are filled with chromolite luminescent material which glows bright blue in the dark. In 2018, Rolex updated the dial with the addition of the coronet between Swiss and Made at the 6 o'clock position. So if you have the Mark 1 dial before this was changed, consider yourself lucky as this is regarded by enthusiasts as the true 50th anniversary specification. The dial is completed with a date wheel at three o'clock. This was a very useful function for saturation divers who could spend days on end in a decompression chamber. The Sea Dweller was actually the first Rolex dive watch 
to feature a date function, which surprisingly even predates the Submariner. Now, I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to talk about this next point, the Cyclops lens. In over 50 years, this is the first Sea Dweller to feature the Cyclops lens. Rumour has it that Rolex always wanted to add the Cyclops lens to the Sea Dweller. I mean, as a tool watch, it only makes sense. But apparently, Rolex didn't have the technology to fix the Cyclops lens securely enough to withstand the water pressure the rest of the watch was able to cope with. With this addition, the Sea Dweller loses a little bit of its individual character, but has become more of the watch that Rolex initially intended to create. The bezel insert is made from ceramic, or cerachrome as Rolex calls it, which is impervious to scratches or fading. The 60 minute graduated markings are platinum filled via physical vapour deposition, or PVD, and are super legible as you would expect from a watch designed for extreme conditions. As a dive watch, the bezel is unidirectional, naturally, and has the most satisfying sound of any other bezel that I've had the pleasure of fondling. Let's take a moment to listen. The knurling around the edge of the bezel is more pronounced than that on the Submariner, and almost feels sharp to touch if you grip it tightly. This gives the bezel lots of grip, and will be easy to turn even if wet or whilst wearing gloves. One of the defining characteristics of the Sea Dweller is the patent protected helium escape valve on the side of the case. Early saturation divers would experience a phenomenon where the crystal of their watches would pop off during decompression in a decompression chamber. The problem was caused by the tiny helium molecules which are used in the breathing gases and would penetrate the watch over time. When the air pressure was then lowered to that of sea level when rising back to the surface, the helium molecules could not escape from the watch quickly enough. This would increase the pressure inside the watch and forcing the helium through the point of least resistance and popping the crystal off. Rolex set out to create a solution and in 1967, the Sea Dweller was the first watch with a helium escape valve that was also available to the general public. Other watch manufacturers set out to create solutions of their own, like this one shown on the Amiga Seamaster 300. Naturally, we have a trip lock crown which was first introduced on the Sea Dweller in 1970. This was pivotal in creating a watch with a 4000 foot water resistance rating, which is very, very deep indeed. The lug width has grown to 22 millimeters, keeping the bracelet to scale. The Oyster bracelet features a satin brushed finish completed with polished sides. The clasp is Rolex's signature Oyster clasp in conjunction with the safety clasp. This is arguably the best bracelet in its class and closing with the most satisfying clicks. As a dive watch, Rolex is included on-the-go bracelet adjustment to allow you to wear the watch on the outside of your dive suit. Firstly, there is the glide lock, which is similar to the one found on the Submariner. This allows up to 20mm adjustment in 2mm increments. Secondly, there is the flip lock, which adds a whopping 26mm which folds out like so. The flip lock extension is a standard feature on the Sea Dweller, but it's only an option for the Submariner. I presume you can order the flip lock for your Submariner separately from your authorised dealer. If anyone has any more information on this, please let us know in the comment section below. The Sea Dweller 43 saw the introduction of the COSC certified calibre 3235 movement. Before this, the Calibre 3235 was exclusively used in the Day Date and the Date Just, which makes this another first for the Sea Dweller, being the leading professional model to receive this movement. As well as higher precision and improved magnetic resistance, the Calibre 3235 movement has an increased power reserve of 70 hours, compared to only 49 hours for its predecessor. 
the introduction of the Seedweller 43 went some way to creating its own identity within the Rolex lineup, without being considered as just a Submariner on steroids. The Submariner has been the go-to diving watch for many, and has been imitated countless times, but also could be considered as too much of a compromise. If you are lucky enough to have more than one luxury watch in your collection, why not choose the best in each of their respective categories, rather than choosing a jack of all trades but a master of none? The Seedweller 43 is Rolex pushing the envelope, the pinnacle of engineering, and is arguably Rolex's best diving watch ever. Much like Bugatti's engineering achievements with the Chiron, Bugatti recorded a top speed of over 300 miles per hour with the Chiron Supersport 300 Plus. This is an incredible feat in a production car, but even if he had the kahunas to attempt to reach 300 miles per hour in a Chiron, there are only a handful of places on earth where this would be possible. It has been reported that since 2001, there have been less than 10 people that have scuba dived deeper than 300 meters. But much like Bugatti Chiron's top speed, it's nice to say that you could do it if you wanted to. What do you think about the Sea Dweller 43? Do you like the Cyclops lens on the Sea Dweller? Also, would you choose the Sea Dweller over a Submariner? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this watch content and want to see more, please like and subscribe and remember to hit that bell icon.